Hi, uh, my name is Dr. Kishore Ralapati. I'm a consultant colorectal surgeon working at uh, Apollo Hospitals, Jubilee Hills. Um, today we are here to discuss about uh, colon cancer, uh, what are the warning signs, what are the investigations, treatment protocols, and the patient follow-up for uh, uh, colon and rectal cancers uh, uh, for these patients. Uh, to begin with, uh, what are the early signs of colorectal cancers? The earliest signs of colorectal cancers that we come across are usually change in bowel habits, abdominal pain, unexplained weight loss, bleeding through uh, rectum, which means that anytime one goes to the washroom to pass tools, you would notice either mucus or blood coming out of the motion. The, these are the uh, most alarming symptoms that one would come across. And most commonly, uh, patients would visit a physician or a gastroenterologist when they come across these signs or symptoms and they get treated for a short course of time. If any of these symptoms are not resolving with medical treatment, that is when you would require a test called a colonoscopy. So for early detection or prevention of colorectal cancers, colonoscopy plays a very important role in being able to diagnose a cancer even in its earliest stage, which, that, which is what we call in the stage of a polyp. So if it is identified at the stage of a polyp, the gastroenterologist will be able to remove it with the colonoscopy. If it is cancer in itself, that is when they usually would take a little piece and take a look at it underneath the microscope, which would give us a diagnosis of a colon cancer. If a patient or a person is diagnosed with colon or rectal cancer, no need to worry or panic about it. There is treatment protocols for it that are recognized worldwide and give very good uh, outcome for these treatments. To begin with, when a patient is diagnosed with a cancer of the colon or the rectum, we would run a battery of blood investigations, which is followed by a CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis or an MRI scan of the pelvis. Based on these investigations, we initially try to stage the uh, specific cancer, after which we would decide what kind of treatment protocol is to be taken care of. If it is predominantly colon cancer, then most of these patients would definitely benefit from a surgical procedure, which would be removing a section of the colon. Technically, we call it colectomy. These op operations were traditionally done as an open technique as of now, we're able to do these whole operations with the minimally invasive techniques called laparoscopic surgery or robotic surgery. If the cancer is identified as a rectal cancer, a fair number of times if the rectal cancer is locally advanced, that is when we would ask the patients to go for chemotherapy and or a combination of radiation therapy, after which we strongly recommend surgery, followed by a completion of chemotherapy after this whole protocol is done. A fair number of times, even with rectal cancer, we would be able to reattach the ends of the intestine back together because the most significant dogma that we have is that if rectal cancer is diagnosed, that the patients would end up with what we call a colostomy, which is a permanent creation of a bag on the abdomen where the stool is brought out as a tube on the abdominal wall. But with the modern technology and the robotic platform, we are able to reattach both the ends of the intestine and making sure that the patients do not have a social stigma of having to walk around with a colostomy bag on a daily basis. Once after the operation is done, these patients are definitely followed for a minimum period of five years by us, wherein every six months or on a yearly basis, they would continue to require medical investigations of blood investigations or a CT scan or a PET CT scan and as long as we continue this follow-up for a good three to five years and they are cancer-free that is when we would brand a patient as cancer-free. Thank you.